let me just uh, show you how it works. So if I type in a list here and evaluate it. So what's going on behind the scenes is uh, Mathematica, the predictive interface, looks at that input and output. And the first thing it does is decide what possible types, uh, what semantic types that thing could have. The syntactic type is a list of numbers. The semantic type, it could represent just a list of numbers. It could also denote a permutation, could denote a list of digits. Uh, so there are heuristics that um, estimate that, provide a ranking, which, what it thinks is most likely. In this case, since I just typed it in raw, it's probably more likely a vector, just a, a vector than uh, specifically a permutation or a list of digits. Right? So it chooses vector as the main type. It gives you alternatives to disambiguate to the other types. And then it goes through a similar heuristic process for operations on that type and um, ranks those and then presents the top four of those in the predictions bar. And if there are more than four predictions, you get this more button and you, you can click that to get a categorized list of all the operations it thinks might be useful. So um, one of the fundamental principles of the predictive interface is that it has a, a pedagogical role. And you'll notice that if I um, click one of these buttons, say total, not only does it do that operation for me, but also echoes what I could have typed to achieve the same result. So this is intended to, to help users in the course of just using the predictive interface to sort of absorb Mathematica syntax and see how it works. Occasionally there are instances where uh, the code to produce a given effect is a little messy. We don't want to scare people by splatting a mess to the screen. So in that case, for example, if we have 1 plus 2i, um, if I say convert to exponential, it gives me this code hiding construct. It does what I asked it to do, but the code is available if you'd like to see how it was actually implemented. In this case, there's a little bit of messiness with defer because if you have real numbers, it'll go on and evaluate and won't give you the result that you want. Okay, so in addition to just um, helping you get some work done, the predictive interface has a number of services that are not available elsewhere. For example, let's say I do sine 2 pi fx plus phi. Okay, if I evaluate that, then the predictive interface gives me a plot button. And we all know that you can't just wrap plot around this, uh, this function because it has an f and a phi in there, which are not, they don't have values. So um, there are heuristics in the predictive interface that recognize that case, that knows about conventional variable names, and it assumes that x is the independent variable and f and phi are, uh, are parameters, and it chooses ranges for those builds and manipulate, and then uh, gives you a, a manipulable plot so you can vary the frequency and the phase here. Okay. Another service that it provides is help with difficult functions. If I do, um, say, random, random integer, and I make a deep array, um, one of the things that it offers here is permutation, uh, no, transpose. Transpose is what I want. So. There are six different ways to transpose this matrix, and you can probably not figure out what argument you need to supply to get the result you want. But if you see the result and you see the dimensions of the result, you can probably choose the one you want. So in this case, you know, I may have wanted this transpose by looking at this output here, so click that, and that's the one I get. Okay, um, here's a nice thing that uh, the predictive interface does for you. Let's say, suppose I have an image. Okay, so I have an image. Predictive interface will give me various operations for, um, for working on images. So for example, um, there are filters. So let's see, I'm, I'm exploring here. There's a quantized filter. That I can move that slider to see what that does. Okay, so I'll say done. It gives me that result. Go back up here and look at a different one. There's a commonest filter. What's that do? Move this around, okay. Um, get that result. And now if I go back here, um, let's go down here, and look under more, there's a compare images item here. There are various ways to compare images. So let's say I'm going to do a, I don't know, a dissolve, I guess. And now I have to tell it what image I want to compare this image to. Well, there's a pop-up menu here. It's gone through the notebook and found all the images that would be appropriate arguments for that function. 
and offered those to me so I can say compare that image to this one and um, now I can dissolve between the two and see the effects of those two two filters. Okay, um, in some instances the things that the predictive interface offers are not necessarily operations on an object but it has a flavor of um, the kinds of things you're doing and kind of provides a see also functionality. So for example if I ask for um, I don't know, processor type. Okay. So the output here is a text string. It treats this as a text string, but it gives me the option to uh, look at the input symbol instead. And if I do that, it gives me a bunch of related information. So if I'm interested in processor type, I might also be interested, for example, in processor count. So it gives you that cluster of functionality right there in the predictive interface. Okay. Um, roll up is a function that works like this. So if I put type something here and uh, say I do a prime factorization and then I ask for the largest factor. Okay, so I've done two steps and there's this roll up button here. If I say roll up, what it does is consolidate those two individual steps into one expression which operates on the initial input. So essentially what I've done here is I've done some programming by example and I've uh, wrapped up those individual steps, packaged them into one function. And uh, it occurred to me the other day that this may be something we add. It would be very nice now to take this rolled up function and generalize from the specific case to a function. So it could, for example, substitute 1, 2, 3, 4 with the hash and make a function out of that. So I think there are things in the predictive interface for, for beginners as well as for experts. Um, the initial uh, motivation was to target beginners and I th we've offered many things for them. So for example, uh, for beginners, you can get something done when you're new to Mathematica. You can learn what Mathematica can do and you can learn how to do it. So if you're confronted with the blank screen here, if you can make some sort of start, you know, like 5 plus 5, then first of all, the mere fact that this predictive interface pops up, it shows you, it acquaints you with the functionality that Mathematica has that you can take advantage of. And then of course by clicking on things, you can see what they do and absorb some programming along the way. So we hope that uh, this will really give new users a, f a, a fast foothold into Mathematica and Mathematica programming. Uh, but I think it's also useful for experts um, in two cases, exploration and discovery and also um, just convenience. So, you know, whenever I look over somebody else's shoulder who's using Mathematica, I always have the experience to say, oh, I didn't know you could do that. It's just such a vast program, but there are always corners you're not acquainted with. So. Um, if, for example, I do, you know, system, okay, so the result is a string, and, um, you know, you look down here and you may not, have, may not have known that there's a speak function, that you can speak strings, so I think this will help you discover uh, functionality in the system. Uh, another thing is just the convenience factor, and I'll show you an example. I, I take advantage of this all the time. I think it's great. So if you produce, a, say, a plot, Okay, and now in the more menu here, there's an export function. You can export this as a GIF, say. Okay. So whenever I use export, I have no idea where that file went. Uh, but now the predictive interface will give you, you know, it will tell you the path name of that file <coughs> so you can find it. Or it'll even just open up the directory for you so you can go locate it. Or um, you can open it, tell it to open it with the, the system previewer for that kind of thing see if it exported correctly. Um, or you can import it again to see if the import corresponds to the export. So I think those kinds of convenience functions are they're interesting uh, to people who are not necessarily beginners. Okay, so anybody who aspires to, um, to make an intelligent assistant of any sort has to deal with the legacy of Clippy, um, <laughs> which was... Microsoft's wildly ridiculed and disastrous attempt at, a, at an intelligent assistant. And we work very hard to ensure that our users don't have a Clippy experience. Um, so for one, there's no annoying anthropomorphism and there's no distracting uh, animation. But instead, the interface is at hand. It's right below where you need it, uh, but it's unobtrusive. And if you want the interface to go away for a while, there's a, there's a, um, a little hide button here so you can hide it away. It's still here available on the right hand corner 
uh, if you do further evaluations, it'll stay hidden, but if you want access to it, you can quickly pop it up and get your predictions. Uh, no stupid. So one of the things that was really annoying about Clippy was it just made inane suggestions. And uh, our philosophy is if, if you don't have anything not stupid to say, don't say it. Um, of course, we aspire to more than that. Uh, we want to say intelligent things, but uh, we tend toward minimalism rather than uh, excess. Another thing which is very important is feedback. So in the uh, predictive interface bar itself, there's a feedback message here. You can send feedback immediately if you notice something that's missing or a prediction you think is stupid. Um, so that capability is magnified by this capability. These rules are field updatable. <coughs> so you don't have to wait for the next release of Mathematica to get the latest improvements in the predictor. Um, just like the data packlets, it will occasionally check back to our servers and download the latest set of uh, heuristics for the predictive rules. So we'll have a, you know, probably have a regular release schedule, just like alpha is released every week. As we get this feedback and process it and improve the rules, you'll, you'll be able to take advantage of that immediately. And finally, um, we hope that um, it actually app offers useful services and that uh, the predictive interface will become a, a welcome companion, uh, even though it doesn't have buggy eyes and dance down on the bottom of your corner uh, of your screen. So um, in the future, you can expect to see expanded coverage. Mathematica is a vast program. We've <coughs> this is going to have to be rolled out like Wolfram Alpha was. We've made an initial uh, set of heuristics, uh, which does an adequate job and many things. There are, of course, many corners of Mathematica we haven't covered. We'll be doing that as we go along. The feedback, of course, will flow back into the rules and improve them, and this will mature and I think um, get much better. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>